Sometimes I would think, I have several siblings, you know, we're five in the family. Uh, although we came from the same family, we're very different. I don't know if you've experienced that, right? I found this picture, funny picture on the internet. It's a family picture. <laughs> you see the family picture there? And I could totally relate with the, with, with the elder daughter there dressed in black because I considered myself as the black sheep of the, of the family. And uh, so I, I'm very different with my siblings, uh, especially with my youngest brother. So I'm the eldest and, and uh, my youngest brother. I'm very extrovert and my younger brother is very introvert, okay? And you know, he, he, he excelled in basketball. He was the superstar of his team and I was a bench warmer in the basketball team. You know, the, the coach will, will let me in if the, the game is already decided, the last two minutes, okay? The other thing is that my, my, I, I love the outdoor. You know, I love canoeing, uh, cross-country skiing, a, a lot of outdoor activities. And my brother, my brother loves the indoor. You know, for him, vacation is checking in to a hotel or to a resort. And, you know, he, he, he really enjoys that. So we're, we're very different, really. And I'm sure you could relate, right, with your siblings, for those who have siblings here, you, you, you notice that you're different. Even though you came from the same family, you, receive, you, you got the same genes from your parents, and yet you're different, okay? In Scripture, uh, their siblings were very different. Two children of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, both were di very different, okay? Uh, uh, Cain uh, w was more of a hunter, and then uh, uh, Abel was more of a shepherd, okay? Uh, the two sons of, uh, of Isaac, Jacob and Esau, were very different also, right? And uh, Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents, while Esau, Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. Two best friends of Jesus, Mary and Martha, very different. Mary was very contemplative, Martha very active. Very different. Came from the same family, but very different. So that's why when Jesus used this parable of the two sons, he was able to capture the attention of the people, because people could relate, right? When, when, when Jesus used the parable of the two sons, he was able to get the attention of his people because they could relate. And what's, what's in the, the parable of the two sons, okay? Of course, in the, the father, you know, asked the first son, son, go and work today in the vineyard. The first son said, I will not. But later, he changed his mind. Change, the word, Greek word there is metanoia. Also means repentance, repented. He repented and he went to work at the vineyard of his father. And we know Jesus is referring the, these, the first son to the prostitutes and the tax collectors, okay? And the prostitutes and tax collectors they're considered the lowest in society because they're great sinners. They're, they're outcasts. They're looked down upon by people. And yet, when they, when they heard the preaching of John the Baptist of repentance, they repented. They acknowledged their sins and they repented. Okay? Now, we see here then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And then the second son sa said, I will, sir, I will go. And yet, he did not. And of course, Jesus is referring this to the, tax to the, to the chief priests and the elders. Okay? They've been, they've been given the law. And by taking their position, their role as leaders, religious leaders, people would expect that they would abide by the law, by, by the commandments. And yet when they heard the preaching of John the Baptist, 
they did not believe in him because they didn't think that they need to repent. So what happened there? So Jesus Jesus asked the people, which of the two did what what his father wanted? Of course, it's very obvious, right? It's the first son. And yet, what, what Jesus said next was very scandalous. Jesus said, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you, the chief priests and the elders. Now, that's a great scandal, right? Because, you know, the chief priests, the elders, they, they see themselves as righteous. And these tax collectors and prostitutes, they're the great sinners in society. You're saying that they're going to go first to the kingdom of God before us? That was a great scandal, right? And so what could we learn? What could we learn? I hope we're not the second son. What could we learn from the second son? Hope, yeah, so having that mentality that I'm holier than others, right? And, you know, for us, for me, priests, religious, uh, practicing Catholics, it's so easy for us, you know, to judge those who are, let's say, living in sin. When we see a news about, let's say, a priest who got involved in a sex abuse scandal, okay, or a government official got caught with graphic corruption, or um, a person who, who did some mass shooting, or a husband who cheated on his wife, or, or, or a child who's into drug addiction. It's so easy for us, I'm very guilty with this, it's so easy for us to judge them and condemn them, thinking that they're a hopeless case, that they deserve to go to hell. That's the holier thou art mentality, that I'm holier than you, okay? You need repentance, I don't need repentance, okay? And we we saw that picture, that's a picture from uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. You know, there's a Pharisee and the tax collector there. The Pharisee was so obsessed with his self-righteousness, you know, thanking God that he's not like the tax collector, greedy, you know, a dishonest, adulterer, okay? And yet you saw the tax collector there. What did he say? Father, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. What could we learn again from the second son is that words are not enough. Deeds are required. Remember when the second son said, yes, Lord, yes, sir, sir is also Lord, okay? When he said, and, and you know, it reminds us of, of this scripture from Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Right? It says here, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father. The Pharisees, the elders, the chief priests, you know, they're good in preaching the word of God, and yet they do not apply it in their life. Words are not enough. Deeds are required. What could we learn from the first son who represents the tax collectors, the prostitutes? Okay? You know, what we could learn there is great humility. We need to acknowledge that we all, all, including me, are great sinners. All men have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. We need to acknowledge that we're great sinners. And we need to repent from our sin. And that's what the Lord desires, for us to repent so that we will be able to go to heaven with him forever. You know, in the diary of St. Faustina, uh, section 1146, 
It says, let the greatest sinners place their trust in my mercy. They have the right before others to trust in the abyss of my mercy. My daughter, write about my mercy towards tormented souls. Souls that make, appeal, make an appeal to my mercy delight me. To such souls, I grant even more graces than they ask. I cannot punish even the greatest sinner if he makes an appeal to my compassion. But on the contrary, I, just, I justify him in my unfathomable and inscrutable mercy. Okay. The Lord is merciful. The Lord could forgive any sin that we've done, no matter how big, no matter how numerous. God forgives every sinner. And, you know, you know the Lord really delights in, in the humble. You know, it, it says here, the humble man makes room for progress, but the proud man believes he's already there. That was the problem of the chief priests and the elders. They think that they're already there, that they're righteous already, that they're holy, that they no need to repent. Okay? And hopefully we don't fall into that. We all have always room for improvement, for us to grow. Okay? In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, In relations with one another, clothe yourselves with humility, because God is stern with the proud, but to the humble, he shows kindness. The question I would like to ask you is, who do you want to be? The first son or the second son? Remember, in Matthew chapter 13, 19, verse 30, it says, but many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Thank you.